please, let's take our seats. All right, welcome to this evening's meeting. We're going to have the invocation by Pastor Charles Wright of the Manual Light of the World uh, Church in College Park. It'll be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, please stand with me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you, God, for... God, even the individuals, God, that are gathered here today. God, today I pray, God, uh, God, for unity, God, amongst the people. I thank you for peace, God. I thank you, God, that uh, everyone, God, is together, God, unified as one, God, even as the Bible speaks and tells us uh, about government, God, why you place government, God, officials, God, uh, so that the people, God, would have a voice and that there would be peace that would rest in the land, God. So every official, God, here today, God, I pray, God, uh, that you walk with them, that you talk with them, God. And God, even as you talk to them, God, that they in their lives will find you, God, and talk with you, God. That every decision, God, that is made in this county, God, would all point to you, God, would point to peace, would point to unity, God. We thank you for it today, God. We give you glory for it, God. We give you praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Good evening to all and welcome to the May 1st, 2018 regular business meeting. The first order of business is the adoption of the agenda. Does any member want to offer any amendments? Uh, uh, yes, I would like to hold number nine until we get our communications director. I'll second that. All right, it's been properly moved and second. Are there any questions? Okay, my question is, why are we holding a vote on this issue uh, when we are recording public comment, comments made by the citizens uh, I, I, everybody understands that a communications director crafts messages to be disseminated to the public. So with that being said, is the intent here to start censoring what the, com the public comments are, are being uh, displayed by the citizens? Is that the uh, intent of waiting for the communications director? Because if it's not, it doesn't make sense for a communications director to come in and start crafting what a citizen says or changing or deleting anything that they may have said on record. Mr. Chair, I do agree with you. Uh, where I do understand the motion, I understand the motion. However, as you mentioned, that position would not have anything to do with public comment. Uh, the public comments are on video or not on video, but they would just be on video and they would continue to be, I guess, um, presented as the clerk would present them. The communications director wouldn't have anything to do with that. So I concur. Yeah, so to me it doesn't make sense to hold this unless you are looking to censor the comments from the citizens. So my question is simply, if any of the board members would like to answer, why would we hold it in light of a communications director? The clerk asked for changes to the agenda, and that's the amendment I would like to make to the agenda. Okay, you made the motion, so yes. uh, let me ask specifically of you, is there any specific reason why you are making that other than just because I would can. like to hold it until the uh, communications director is on board. Oh, okay. well, I'll I'll I guess question, I guess, Mr. Chair. Come on, so come on. We need order, please. Call the question. Question's been called. It's been moved and probably seconded. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Three to it. It passes. Are there any further amendments? Hearing none, may we have a motion to adopt the agenda with the approved amendment? So move. Second. So second. Probably moved and second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. 
Uh, three to it passes. The board has one proclamation to present this evening. Clayton County recognizes the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Inc. Atlanta Suburban mm -hmm. Alumni Chapter 25th anniversary celebrating a legacy of excellence event as presented by Commissioner Gregory with the members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Please come forward at this time as the commissioners join you for the presentation of the proclamation. Clayton County recognizes Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Inc. celebrating a legacy of excellence. Whereas, the Atlanta Suburban Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Inc. is observing its 25th anniversary event, celebrating a legacy of excellence, Saturday, May 19, 2018, at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Georgia Tech Conference Center, located at 800 Spring Street Northwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. And whereas Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is an organization of college educated women committed to the constructive development of its members and to public service with a primary focus on the black community. And whereas Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was founded in 1913 at Howard University in Washington, D.C. as a private, not for profit organization whose purpose is to provide assistance and support through established programs in local communities throughout the world. And whereas the Atlanta Suburban Alumni Chapter was chartered on April 24, 1993 with 74 members, one posthumously, and has grown to over 200 members. The chapter serves the city of Atlanta, Fayette County, and Clayton County. The major programs of the sorority are based upon the organization's five-point programmatic thrust of educational development, economic development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. And whereas, Atlanta Suburban Chapter has a long-standing tradition of making a difference in the communities we serve as embedded in our theme for this biennium, inspire, invest, impact. And whereas, Atlanta Suburban Alumni Chapter provides impactful programs in Clayton County to educate, advocate, and empower the community on issues related to voter registration and voting rights, political forums, financial fortitude, preparing young girls for leadership in the 21st century, providing support for the global community with workshops on human trafficking, and addressing the challenges of living holistic 
and healthy lives. Now, therefore, I, Sona Singleton Gregory, on behalf of the Clayton County Board of Commissioners, do hereby honor and recognize Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Inc., Atlanta Suburban Alumni Chapter, 25th Anniversary Celebration, celebrating a legacy of excellence for the work they are doing in Clayton County, Georgia. In witness thereof, I have here to set my hand and cause the seal of Clayton County, Georgia, to be affixed this first day of May in the year 2018. Sona Singleton Gregory, Commissioner. Board will now hear the Martyr quarterly briefing as presented by the Martyr CEO, Jeffrey Parker. Good evening, Chairman Turner and uh, members of the commission. I want to thank you all for inviting me here today, and I'm going to spend a, uh, a few minutes going through some of the uh, key things that are going on across the Martyr system, but more importantly here in Clayton County. I'd like to thank my two board members for joining me today and uh, showing their support, so it's great to see them as well. So uh, first, I will run through sort of the state and federal uh, legislative outlook, some big things that have happened both at the state and local le level, and as well talk about the uh, state of service and what's going on here at MARTA. Um, clearly, we had a, uh, a significant milestone with the state legislature with passing of House Bill 930 the transit governance uh, legislation that passed. And I think that, sorry, and I think that, uh, you know, part of the, there's, there's really two key takeaways here. One is that the relationship between MARTA and its jurisdictions, including Clayton County, are sound, are intact, and the agreement that we have to provide services is really unaffected by the changes at the regional level. But outside of the MARTA district, the counties outside of the MARTA district do now have a path forward to invest in and to consider expanding transit. So I think it's a win-win both for the, the jurisdictions within the MARTA district and the investment that they have been making historically, as well as focusing on, on uh, regional development of transit around the region. At the federal level, the good news is that there's a continued investment in transit and what that's going to affect us clearly is the ability to leverage the local dollars that we have with funding through the FTA to build projects as well as smaller programs such as the TIGER program that are going to be critical to do smaller projects within our region. Uh, the state of service, we've got a lot of things going on. I'd like to highlight a few of them and then talk about things specifically going on here in, here in Clayton County. So across our rail system, we know that uh, a vital way to access the rail system is through elevators and escalators. We're undergoing a uh, rehabilitation of our entire system. Right now, we've uh, made significant progress. Um, we have several elevators and escalators um, that are in progress being rebuilt. It's about an eight-year progress to get to, through the entire system, rebuild, replace uh, motors and mechanisms, and really make sure that these, uh, this equipment is reliable and available to our patrons. Uh, we've been working hard to upgrade Wi-Fi and cellular service in the tunnels as well as the buses. So we've completed installation of, of Wi-Fi on all of our buses. 
as well as the trains, at least when they're operating above ground. And right now we're in the middle of uh, installing equipment underneath the system so that people can continue to use cell phones and Wi-Fi on the trains underground. We're on track to get this all done before the end of this year so that when uh, the Super Bowl is here in, in, in Metro Atlanta, that service will be up and running. So we're excited about that. Another really key part of the service that we operate is our, <coughs> is our fleet of buses and mobility vans. We're undergoing a significant replacement of that equipment. Over the next six years, we'll be replacing 83% of the buses and modernizing the buses with, a, with a Wi-Fi and higher definition security cameras and other amenities. And this will be, these, these buses as they can come in will be scattered throughout the MARTA system. So you'll see some of them here in Clayton County. I think we're getting about 45 buses this fall. And like I said, over a number of years, we'll be replacing uh, the vast majority of, of the uh, MARTA fleet and modernizing it. Uh, you're well aware of our ridership with respect campaign, something that Keith Parker, my predecessor, started. I think it's an invaluable uh, uh, concept that, that we've implemented and we're going to undergo a refresh, um, leverage a lot of media around it and make sure that folks are, are aware of the campaign. It's been highly successful, um, significant number of, uh, of suspensions, but it's really, really resulted in, in a, uh, in an environment that our patrons appreciate and making sure that the silly behavior that sometimes we see on our MARTA trains and buses is, uh, is uh, dealt with in a respectful way. So that's been a huge success and we'll be refreshing that over this fall. Um, another really important piece of it is the More MARTA program and this is all of the expansion projects that we are focusing on. Clearly here in Clayton County is, is a critical piece of that. We've seen significant bus ridership um, since we since we started the service several years ago. As you can see, the, uh, the, the routes and the ridership um, in front of you, we have two routes, the 55 route and the uh, 196 have significant service. And we have a second phase of, uh, of bus routes where we plan on introducing two more routes of service in, in 2020. So these will be key to, uh, to expanding the, the bus service in, in the county. Uh, we're also, as, as everyone's well aware, we're looking at a transit initiative that goes back to when Clayton County joined the MARTA district, and we're undergoing a study right now to come up with a preferred alternative so that we can uh, provide fixed route uh, service here in the county. Um, we're, we're focusing on the public involvement process right now with a plan of coming up with the, with the preferred alternative this fall and that will allow us to finalize the environmental and the planning efforts and ultimately build and construct the system with the plan of having deployment in the winter of uh, 2019. So we're looking forward to making sure that we're reaching out to the community, listening to folks, and uh, making sure that the, ultimately the locally preferred alternative is what the, the citizens and, and the commission are really looking for. So we look forward to continuing that effort um, over the summer and the fall. Um, part of that, we do have a Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, they have been meeting quarterly, um, providing us great in input into the transit needs of the community. We're going to continue uh, to do that. And I think that under Ben Limmer, our Director of Planning, we've done a great job in engaging people, trying to understand the needs of the community. So looking forward to continue, continue to work with you and to come back and talk about what that uh, fixed route service needs to be as, as we move forward with the project. We also have a commitment to uh, uh, place an operations and maintenance facility here in the county uh, and we're working on our slight site selection and that's also uh, looking to finalize and, uh, and acquire the real estate in the fall of 2019 uh, and make sure we engage the stakeholders and the public as we, as we find the right site for that, for that facility. Uh, we also intend to uh, call out the, the MARTA police at that facility so that we've got a full service facility that can serve the citizens of this county. In addition, uh, benches and amenities, and I think it's really important that we point out that we, that we recognize that those amenities are critically important to the system that we run. 
Uh, passengers just quite frankly need to have a bench to sit on or a shelter that uh, gets them out of the rain and the wind. And we are committed to making sure that we build out and expand the uh, benches and the shelters, not only throughout Clayton County, but throughout the MARTA district. We have, a <laughs> we have about 9,400 stops total system-wide. Right now, just over 600 shelters, 84 benches, and 24 seats. Uh, this is system-wide. We do have currently 20 bus stops here in the county that have amenities today. Um, we're looking at installing six, uh, excuse me, five more shelters within the county. These locations are on the screen, as you can see. We're actively permitting those locations and are on track to get these, uh, these installed this year. Um, if you look out over the entire system with the standard of the ridership that we want to have in order to install a shelter, or a bench, we've got 97 stops that meet that criteria, and we'll be working really to put together a comprehensive plan across the system here in Clayton County as well as other jurisdictions so that we can make sure we meet the demands. I hear it across the, the uh, MARTA system, the need for more shelters and more benches, and I'm really trying to uh, come up with a plan that we can make sure that we deliver those services and meet the needs of our customers. So I'm looking forward to uh, coming back and having a, a long-term plan that we can deliver as to how to build this out appropriately over a number of years. Um, so with that, I am going to allow you to ask me any questions that you want. I moved through fairly quickly, but I thought that uh, these were the highlights of what I should be talking about. So, Chairman? Yes, thank you, Mr. Parker, for You're your welcome. presentation and just for the uh, sake of uh, this, this meeting. Mr. Parker is the new CEO of MARTA. Welcome. Thank you. And we're looking forward. Yes, give him a round of applause. <laughs> and we're looking forward to uh, continually work with uh, MARTA on a number of uh, concerns, issues, and Absolutely. even the good things as mm -hmm. they come up. We've always had a pretty good open dialogue with the officials at MARTA, mm -hmm. and we truly expect that to continue. It will. I also have to uh, recognize our board appointments, Mr. Jerry Griffin and Roberta Abdul Salon. Let's give them a round of applause because they are keeping our interests on point. And we definitely appreciate that. Uh, are there any questions for Mr. Par Parker by the board members? Yes, Mr. Chair. First, I want to as well say thank you to everyone from MARTA and also to our board members. Um, we had a, a great event most recently to celebrate the anniversary of uh, three years of having MARTA back in Clayton County. And it's so pleasing to be able to see that where we were there on the cusp to be the first to, be jo to join MARTA once again right. in several years, right. and now to see the state of Georgia now understand in order for there to be growth, we've got to take transportation seriously. So that is so good. I do have a, a quick question. Um, I know you said that you have a plan, and I know I've been working with John and Ben, but the plan for the stops, the 97 stops, what is the time frame? Because we kind of been seeing that, but what's the time frame for that? Do we have yeah, a time Yeah, you know, frame? we've got, um, you know, it's, it's my intention when I come back next quarter to have really a long range plan. You know, I think that realistically over a three to five year period is when we can start, um, you know, building out that significant number of shelters um, it's, it's, it's a big effort across the region, uh, excuse me, across the jurisdictions, Clayton County, it's, it's critically important, and I'd like to just come back with a, with a very clear, a very time-bound approach to delivering these shelters, because I think that's what we, you know, we need to provide the, uh, the commission, um, the other jurisdictions, and have clarity around what our plans are. Well, as our commission, thank you, but as our commissioner alluded to earlier, Commissioner Hamburg, uh, when we get our communications director on board, I'd like to see us work together to make this happen. Sure. Because you got to remember um, the approach in Atlanta may not be the approach Absolutely. that needs to be taken here in order to accomplish this goal. So I'll be looking forward mm -hmm. to us working closely together. And I'm actually also looking forward to us looking at a um, s some type of a substation at the Justice Center, mm -hmm. as we've discussed, because we've got to move those buses. Like if I can move them 
by today, I would, because it's a hazard at this point. Because right. those buses sit right at the top of Jim yeah. Huey as people are turning in and out, and that's our main justice center. So I think that we can hopefully move a little quicker to get to the solution of that as well as some other things. So, But okay. I'm excited to have you, glad to have the team here, and I'm looking forward to working together. Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner. Uh, yes, Mr. Parker, the questions that come from my constituents um, the majority of them, are, when are we getting rail? Uh, do you have any information yeah, for us on that? Yeah, you know, it really goes back to, let me just bring the, the slide back up. So as, as I said, we are, you know, we are in the, the final process of coming up with, the, with what's called that preferred alternative, the locally preferred alternative. And it sounds like a funny name, but it is, it means something to the Federal Transit Administration. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is it is, <laughs> It's the preferred corridor, the preferred mode that, that meets the transportation need, but also has the support of the local region, in this case, Clayton County. And at that point in time, we will be able to finalize and work to finalize the environmental process. But we need to go through this, come up with and finalize the locally preferred alternative, because without that, we're not gonna be eligible to seek federal funds to help pay for part of this project. So fall, this fall, we, we plan on finalizing the uh, locally preferred alternative, what the route will be, what the mode will be. We're hearing loud and clear that Clayton County, uh, Chairman Turner and I spoke about this. I think it was the first or second week I was, I was here and we recognize the, uh, you know, the, the value and the, the permanency <coughs> of rail. And when we get through the process of the locally preferred alternative, we'll finalize the environmental process within a year and enter into the uh, project development in, in the winter of 2019. Can you give me an example of an alternative plan or what you would use? What, I'm, I'm assuming yeah. that's not real. Yeah, you know, there are, there are several quarters that are potentially real. Um, as well as, you know, BRT up and down Terra Boulevard and the Federal Transit Administration wants us to give fair consideration to all those, all of those modes. And I don't want to, I don't want to project forward what the answer to the question is going to be, but I recognize loud and clear that, you know, there is an expectation and that's where we're headed to provide a rail alternative to, to meet the needs and the commitments that MARTA has given to, uh, to the county. <coughs> okay, well, uh, I have one more, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, some years ago, this board um, put people on an advisory board for the mm -hmm. rail. Are you utilizing that board? Are you utilizing those people? Or has it, I know you're kind of new, but or has it just become defunct or? Yeah, no, my understanding is that, you know, Ben wants to add to it that we've been having quarterly meetings mm -hmm. with that okay. board and that's mm -hmm. been a, you know, a, a key point of us getting community import, input in order to uh, advance this alternatives analysis. Thank you. Do we have any of those people here tonight? Mm -hmm. uh, board. On that citizen. One of your members came board. in early, he's here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I've attended as well, commissioners. Yeah, and let me say that that's the one thing that MARTA has done well. They have had several meetings uh, throughout the county, and they've had several, as a matter of fact, in this building here. Mm -hmm. So they're doing that extremely well in terms of trying to get solicitation from mm -hmm. the public. Now, my one question right quick is in reference to the bus facility. Right. I know you probably have a site com uh, committee that goes out looking. Is right. anybody from the county, from Clayton County, involved on that committee as well? You know, it's my assumption, but I need to confirm that, that we're using that same advisory committee or a similar group to, uh, to, to help site that facility. Is that Ben? Yeah. This is Ben Limmer, the Director of Planning. So yeah, thank you for having me. We are uh, working with the citizens group, but also um, once we identify potential sites for the maintenance uh, facility we would obviously be in close coordination with city and county staffs wherever that those sites would be so uh, the answer is yes both the both the citizens group as well as staff okay we state your name for the record uh, Ben Limmer with Marta okay another question is is there a timeline as to 
recognizing the location and then starting construction? We'd like to bring the facility facility on board shortly after the next wave of bus service, which is scheduled for 2020, although we don't have a precise timeline at this time. But that can be something else that we can certainly bring more detail back during our next briefing. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? <clears throat> All right, here none. Thank you again, Mr. Parker, Thank for your you. presentation. And let me just make one last comment. I've been several meetings with uh, where you have spoken, mm -hmm. and each time you have had opportunity to talk about transit, you've always highlighted that Clayton County is an integral part of the system that makes up MARTA. So thank you for always bringing our importance to light. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. And the final presentation for this evening, the Office of Youth Services update as presented by Nicole Horn, the administrator of the Office of Youth Services. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we can give her a hand. She's done an awesome job. Thank you. Um, good evening, Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Commissioners. It is an honor for us to be able to come before you tonight to present to you a few programs and services that we've offered over the third quarter is especially um, an honor as tomorrow will be our first anniversary as being Yay. created by this board. And it's also the last, <laughs> and it's also the last meeting for our official board meeting for our 2017, 2018 youth commission. So um, as we begin, the mission of the Office of Youth Services is to offer and promote program and service opportunities to youth of Clayton County these programs are designed to create a positive learning experience that will give promising contributing members, that will give rise to promising and contributing members of our community. As we migrate through this presentation, you will notice that the programs and services that were offered over the past quarter will be in direct correlation with our following goals. To serve as the functioning body and development of plans in the areas of policy development and civic engagement for youth related issues, Increase the number of youth who have access to and complete a post-secondary pathway and obtain a job. Identify service gaps and prioritize citywide, countywide, I'm sorry, resources for efficient coordination of services and to identify funding sources. With support from the Board of Commissioners, a partnership was formed with Anchor Connects back in February to provide a work experience program for youth in Clayton County ages 18 to 24 who are in the process of getting their GED. Currently, we have four students um, enrolled in that program, and they are working in the police department through E911, library services, and the Department of Information and Technology. In March, um, in, in conjunction with Commissioner Gregory, the office offered a summer job fair to the youth of Clayton County with these companies here that you see listed. Um, out of the job fair, we had 158 youth in Clayton County trained by Ryan Shar, human resources trainer and researcher on how to gear up for job success. Of those students, Cookout interviewed 15 participants for the Riverdale and Mar Morrow stores. The swim center scheduled 25 applicants for follow-up swim tests to be lifeguards for the summer. American Eagle scheduled 13 interviews and hired one applicant Waffle House of Clayton County has hired five participants, and Golden Corral called by, back 12 participants for interviews in their Stockbridge location. Um, as you'll see, that we have positive feedback from those employers in terms of being impressed with how the children behaved, how they were dressed, and able to answer their questions during the interview. Um, in October, we hosted a Youth Services Provider Summit. Out of that summit, we've established a community um, action Community Network. Action stands for agencies collaborating to increase opportunities for our youth now. Through that network and community effort, we'll be creating strategies to address the service gaps and delivery for youth in Clayton County, share information, and create networking opportunities. The areas of focus that action will use over the next year um, have come from our Child Wellbeing Index, where Clayton County has a 36% rate. Um, and zip codes 32, 30274, 30296, 30297, and 30249. Um, we will focus on eighth grade math, third grade reading, out of school, pro, 
out of school time programming for middle school age youth, and then we will continue to donate non-perishable items to um, local food pantries in that area. Efforts have already begun with the um, food pantries and the food donation through the Youth Commission. Back at the earlier part of the year, we hosted a food drive. The recreation centers and libraries allowed us to put boxes in their facility so that we co could collect canned goods. 269 canned goods were donated to the Hearts and Nourish Hope to provide meals to the, to the youth or the families in that area. Um, 1.2 pounds of food equals one meal, one meal, and we had one to seven pound cans in variety through, that do through those donations. As we looked at funding sources throughout the year to date, we have um, collected $7,138 through local businesses, American Eagle Outfitters Foundation, a private donation, and then association, and the Association for County Commissioners of Georgia grant. Now we'll turn it over to Ms. Morris and she'll talk to you about the Youth Commission. I'm sorry, if you could please state your first and last name, please. Okay. Hello, I'm Janae Morris. The Clayton County Youth Commissioners strive for success with excellent work ethics and innovation to transform the community with distinguished honor. The Clayton County Youth Commission has four committees. Um, they were each tasked to find an issue that's affecting Clayton County youth and develop a platform project to address that need. Our first committee is the Education and Career Development Committee. They were advised by Ms. Siobhan Simmons. That committee holds Jamal Borden, who is the Vice Chair of the Clayton County Com Youth Commission, Kirsten Dudley, and Christina Pavone Baker, who is the Chairperson. Um, the issues that we established in our uh, uh, group was teens are unaware of the poten potential job offers that are available in their community, teens do not know how to create a proper resume, and teens do not know how to properly dress. We also assisted uh, Commissioner Gregory in the job fair, and here are two clips that we have. Thank you. <laughs> Our next committee is the Health and Wellness Committee. Their advisor is Dr. Deanne Bing. On that committee is Brianna Chisholm, Nia Lankford, Kennedy Russell, and Mike Ellison Womack. For our platform project, we decided to conduct a social experiment on the issue of teen pregnancy. Okay, so you guys just walked around with your friends and the empathy 
And for the final committee, we merged the Legislative and Social Justice Committee together. They are advised by Dr. Tawanda Braswell, Chioma Ajunama, Janae Gates, Anissa Sanders, Jay Shy, and Gabrielle Welch Delaney makes up this committee. Well, the problems that youth face is that they lack the knowledge of the law in their own rights. And as a result, the youth now mis um, mis have a mistrust with law enforcement. So our platform project was held at the Teen Summit this year, and we hosted a workshop in conjunction with the Clayton County Police Department, where we talked about the do's and don'ts of driving, you know, driving under the influence of drugs and driving with contraband. And this is a picture with the group members as well as the Clayton County Police Department. This year was the first time that Clayton County has ever been invited to participate in the Georgia Secretary of State Student Ambassador Program. The Ambassadors Program is a leadership training program for high school students in the 10th through 12th grades that encourages civic participation and voter registration. So congratulations are in order. The Clayton County Youth Commission secured first place in their region, right. second place in the state, and Rookie of the Year. They were tasked with a host of different activities that were weighed by a point system. Um, some of their highlights were making 183 videos about voting and civic engagement. They participated in 48 civic meetings and researched and report 44 current events. Some of our additional monumental gains with the Clayton County Youth Commission, Janae Gates, she's not here tonight, but she was awarded an opportunity to go to Tuskegee University this summer, where she will participate in a veterinary medicine program to become a doctor. <laughs> Nia Langford was awarded the Youth Leadership of the Year Award at this year's ACCG Youth Conference. The award recognizes someone who has an understanding of what skills effective leaders possess and has made an impact at school and in the community. And last but definitely not least is Jay Shy. She was awarded the opportunity to participate in Ambassadors and Sneakers, a Young Leaders Transatlantic Summer Academy on Human Rights. She will be traveling to Germany this summer to learn about defending those human rights. Thank you for your time and this opportunity to present to you all tonight. All right, I'm sure I don't have to say this, but y'all rock. <laughs> Appreciate how well you represent Clayton County. Are there any other statements or comments from board members? I told them early just how very proud I am of them. And um, just like I put on social media, uh, one night this week, you know, I'm so thankful for this board when, when this idea was brought to create a youth commission and a youth services department that this board agreed because we see what happens when we invest in the youth in our community and this board most definitely 
is uh, concerned and invested in this community. I'm just so proud of these young people. I can't believe it. And to have one of our own, Nia Langford, this weekend, she was recognized at the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, and there are other county commissioners in the state. I didn't get to see her. I was laying outside on the floor, but I didn't get to <laughs> see her get the award. But I was just so very proud when Mr. Stanford told me she was just recognized. But these young people are awesome. And I. <laughs> And also, their their advisors and their administrator, yeah, Ms. Horn and Janae Morris and Dr. B. They're great. Thank you. And I would like to say thank you to Commissioner Gregory because when I came on board, this was her thing: is that we need to get a youth commission here in Clayton County. The first um, ACCG, which is the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia, held a meeting, and I think it was Savannah that uh, started this and you know she was just determined from then on to get this started in Clayton County. I really appreciate you for doing that. Thank you. And I just have to add on to it. You all really do an amazing job. Everywhere we go they are bragging about Clayton County's Youth Council and I don't know how you did all of the events you did because yeah. you only highlighted a few of them but every time I turned around you all were having something else that you were presenting to the community to keep the youth of the community involved so I'm so proud of you we're gonna miss every one of you all that are going off to college but remember to come on back home so we look forward to great things out of you thank you so much Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. What and thank you, Commissioner. Yes, thank yeah, you all for strong. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> we are Clay Strong. Mr. Chairman, the board will now consider the consent agenda. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mm, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Chairman, the last items on the agenda are board appointments. Okay, at this time we'll have board appointments. The first is the appointment to the Board of Elections and Registration to fill the unexpired term of Harry Osborne, who resigned. The term expires on December 31st, 2018. Vice Chairman Edmondson's appointment. Mr. Chairman, I nominate Ms. Diane Givens. Is there a second? Second. Probably move and second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Next item is appointment to the Veterans Advisory Board to fill the expiring term of Mr. Wilbert Jordan. The term is four years, expiring on June 6, 2022. And that is uh, Chairman Turner's appointment. And at this time, I'd like to, I've spoken to Mr. Uh, Jordan. He would like to remain, so I move to uh, reappoint him. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Next is appointment to the Veterans Advisory Board to fill the expiring term of Mr. Preston McGee, Jr. The term is four years, expiring on June 6, 2022. Also, my appointment, I'm going to hold it at this time. Uh, not ready to move forward on him. The next appointment is the same to the v Veterans Advisory Board to fill the expiring term of Mr. Leonard Morgan. The term is four, four years expiring on June 6, 2020. And at this time, I'd like to recommend the reappointment of Mr. Leonard Morgan. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Uh, do we need an executive session? Yes, Chairman, on litigation and personnel. Is there a motion to go into executive session for litigation and what was the other? Personnel. Personnel. Litigation and personnel. Yes, sir. Was there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. It. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Have a good night. Motion to reconvene. So moved. I'll second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. Mr. Hancock. Chairman, I'd like uh, authority to authorize uh, the continuance of the um, county's participation in the agreement with Van Skoyak and Associates, who have been the lo Washington lobbyists, assisting all the Clayton County entities uh, in the at, at the in the FAA uh, lobbying effort in uh, Washington. The county's portion of a six thousand dollar per month bill is nineteen hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy cents. 
So that would be for an, for an additional six months. Was there two items or just that one? That was it. That was okay. all I had. Um, Is it? You have a, no, we don't need that until we have an agreement. Oh. No, no. no. All right, is that a motion? So moved. Uh, second. Second. Any questions? I got one question. What was the name of the law firm again? It's a, it's a lobbying firm, and it's Van Skoyak, S-C-O-Y-O-C -O -O Associates. Steve Palmer and Shannon Hanna are the two people that we deal with. Isn't that our, what is it, Irene Howie? Isn't she Irene, that no, that, she's not part of that group. She's a lawyer. Uh, these are, this is just a lobbying group. group. Mm -hmm. All right. And they're, Fincher Denmark actually employed them. The county's just been participating in paying that fee along with all the cities and school system. School system pays right. half the of Clayton them. County Entities Group. Yes, sir. All right, any other questions? Hearing none, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. It's unanimous. Nay. Oh, wait a minute, 4 1, it passes. Uh, motion oh, to adjourn. No, it's 4 1. It <laughs> but there's nobody here to see. <laughs> there you go. Oh, motion to adjourn. Yeah, you're right. It's on TV. We're live streaming. Did I already streaming. take a motion to adjourn? We're live streaming right uh, now. Can I get a motion, Felicia? So moved. I'll suck it. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Aye.